We're all weary of the cold, but thank goodness for central heating and the ability to afford it. This winter has been meaner than the ones in recent years past, and people across the country have gotten used to seeing the same scenes day after day drooped in snow that just won't melt. But as it happened, where I live, yesterday was a glorious day of above freezing temperatures. If I'd have worn my coat on my walk to work, I'd have quickly overheated. My waterproof boots shielded my sloshing feet from the watery landscape I was traversing. The sun was shining, the breeze was fresh and cool, and the ice was melting. The ice was melting. Not long before this meltfest, rain came down from the sky and began to freeze solid onto anything receptive. Sleet covered the ground and made travel dangerous, but it was not long to last. Sometimes we anthropomorphize the weather and make it an agent that endeavors to crush our spirits, or our legs if we slip. But in reality, our beloved atmosphere cares not for the preferences of humankind. The weather is the consequence of solar heat differential, because the sun beats down with more energy per unit area at the equators than it does at the poles. This drives the winds. Add a little thing called water, which we happen to depend on entirely for our survival, and you have on your hands a complex system that spreads solid ice, liquid water, and gaseous vapors across the earth. As biological organisms, as we understand them, we require our water to be in a liquid state for it to be used by our bodies. Naturally, when a familiar landscape becomes entombed in a layer of ice, it is of no use to us. It is no use to a plant. It is no use to even the most stoic extremophile, as far as I know. Change comes with time. Even ice ages are fleeting, and permafrost thaws out even as that obnoxious layer of snow on your driveway bids you adieu and continues on its flowing journey back to the seas and the skies. As I walked through town, from every rooftop came the pattering of water released from captivity. Crooked concrete sidewalk sections became like tiny mountain ponds in springtime. Happy lichens, mosses stood out on damp tree trunks as I walked by. It is here that I come to the focus of this blog post. I felt good. My surroundings, however, didn't feel anything and were merely responding to physical changes. But then again, wasn't I. My surroundings had been capped with layers of solid water that were under the hot stare of the sun, changing state before my eyes and resuming a circumstantially halted procession. What metaphor applies? What hardened aspect of ourselves will melt away? Can we not find these same changes of state within us, like the ice, triggered by changes in our physical environment? The average overall motion of particles affects us all. Indeed, it affects it all. My thoughts are such that changes, even subtle ones in your surroundings, can change you if you are observant, attuned, and willing. The key is to guide those changes toward a state of your choosing, but do we actually have the control we think we do? Do we choose anything or do we merely respond as does the ice? Alright, now tell me what you think. Are changes to our state of being the result of conscious actions alone? Does our environment ultimately drive the changes to our identity, or is it more complicated than this?